This video will show an example of writing the solution of a system of equations in parametric vector form. Suppose that we have the following system of equations. Now we have to write this in the augmented matrix form which is going to give us this. Now we have to row reduce this. First, we're going to look at the top left position. That will be our first pivot position. And we're going to create zeros below it. We're going to do that by taking row 2 plus negative row 1 and replacing row 2. Row 3 plus 2 row 1 to replace row 3 and row 4 plus negative row 1 to replace row 4, giving us this matrix. Now we've created zeros below the first pivot position. We see our next pivot position as the first non-zero entry in the second row. And we're going to use that in order to create zeros below it. And this row operation is going to be row 3 plus negative row 2 to replace row 3 and row 4 plus row 2 to replace row 4 giving us this matrix. Now we've created zeros below the second pivot and we can see the third pivot is in the third row, the first non-zero entry here and we're going to use it to create zeros below it with the following row operation. It's going to be row 4 plus 3, row 3 to replace row 4 giving us this. Now we see that we have a row of all zeros, therefore we only have three pivot positions. And now we're going to use the pivots once again to create zeros above them. So we're going to look again at this pivot position and use it to create zeros above. So the operations for this are going to be row 2 plus negative row 3 to replace row 2 and row 1 plus negative 3 times row 3 to replace row 1. And we get this matrix. We can see we have the zeros above this pivot just like we wanted and now we look at the next pivot and create zeros above it with the following operation. We take row 1 plus negative 3 times row 2 and replace row 1. And we get this matrix. And this is in the reduced echelon form. We can see we have our three pivots with zeros both below and above them. And we have a row of zeros and the equation is consistent. So now we can write out the solutions of this by looking at what these equations actually say. We have x1 plus 2x3 minus x5 is equal to 2. That's from the first row. Then x2 plus 2x3 plus 2x5 is equal to 4. That's from the second row. And x5 and x4 plus x5 is equal to negative 1. So we have these three basic variables x1, x2, and x4 corresponding to the columns with the pivots and the free variables x3 and x5 which are going to be the parameters that we can set in this and those correspond to the non-pivot columns. 
So from these three equations, we can write out the full set of solutions, starting with this form, where x1 is equal to 2 minus 2x3 plus x5. That's just rearranging the first equation. x2 is equal to 4 minus 2x3 minus 2x5 from rearranging the second x3 is equal to x3 since it's a free parameter x4 is equal to negative 1 minus x5 that's from this third equation here and x5 is equal to x5 since it is also just a free parameter from this we can start writing things in the parametric vector form by writing this out as a solution set for just a single vector x, which is of course equal to its components from x1 to x5, and that is equal to just writing out the same thing that we had over here 2 minus 2x3 two plus x5 for x1, 4 minus 2x3 two minus 2x5 two for x2, x3 is just x3 x4 is negative 1 minus x5 and x5 is again just x5 is a free parameter we can split this up in terms of the constants and the free parameters as 2 4 0 negative 1 0 these are the constants plus everything in terms of x3 so this will be negative 2 x3 negative 2x3, x3, 0 and 0, since x3 doesn't appear in the last two expressions, and then everything in terms of x5. So x5, negative 2x5, 0, negative x5, and x5. And then we can write this in the final parametric vector form by factoring out the free parameters so the constant vector remains the same. Here we factor out an x3 to get negative 2, negative 2, 1, 0, 0. And x5 times 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1. And this is the final parametric vector form.